I'm waiting for it to stream. Apparently, I had to agree to that. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And we are live. We are live. Hi. Welcome, everybody. Welcome back to yes. Info Dump. The, uh, the insanity continues. <laughs> We're here with uh, my friend, MJ Stewart, who mm -hmm. is going to be talking to us about fascia. And for yes. those of us with fibromyalgia, this is going to be information that's going to be really helpful. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you, First Jada, so much for having me on today. I am just so grateful. Oh, you, to... I'm grateful that you are. If if it was not for you, I would not be doing this podcast. So thank you, too. <laughs> That's fantastic. That is fantastic. I'm glad you are doing it. They've been so entertaining and informational. Um, no, so that's the, that's the whole that's the whole gig. <laughs> so my whole thing is fascia. I am the fascia queen. Um, that's actually one of my TikToks now. Oh, nice. Now I'm hearing dancing queen, but fascia queen. I'm the fascia <laughs> queen. I'm not 17. Um, but yeah, so I'm I'm a nationally board certified equine structural integration therapist. What that means is I rolf horses. Mm. If you've heard of rolfing, is a form of body work that was pioneered by Dr. Ida Rolf in 1954. So it's a relatively modern technique. Um, and it is remarkable. It's, have you ever had a massage? I have. I have. have. I've okay. also, uh, I've had a Thai massage, which is pretty much like getting repeatedly punched in the nuts, but for yes. your muscles. <laughs> yes. That's and also it's, not it's fantastic. Not, it is fantastic, but it isn't structural integration. It's myofascial release. Yeah. But yeah. not structural integration. So what okay. I do is myofascial release, but I do it in a very specific way. Mm -hmm. um, over the course of five sessions with my equine clients, where each one is different and it works on a different part of the body. And what mm -hmm. happens is the fascia, which we're going to get into what it is, um, when it gets damaged, when we have injuries, if we compensate our movement, and this can even be things that happened in the womb. Mm -hmm. So this can be lifelong. This can be confirmation. Mm -hmm. I work on the fascia and it releases, it holds. So fascia is everywhere. And when you work on it, it responds everywhere. Mm. That's why when you had your Thai massage and you were getting myofascia release yeah. on the areas they worked on, I'm sure that you felt less pain for sure, but probably a better range of motion too. Oh yeah, it hurt like a mofo, but when it stopped, it was just this. Yeah. Absolutely. So one of the things that the work I do does for the horses is it improves their range of motion. Um, so I end up working on a lot of race horses because range of motion is also speed. If they okay. can move their shoulders more, you know, if your shoulder can extend further than it could have before, you're going to gain speed. Yeah. Um, yeah. If your hind engine, which is their butt, a horse, a horse powers from behind their, their mm -hmm. rear wheel drive vehicles. Mm, very much so. Um, yeah. And well, when they're when they're proper when their movement is proper they're mm. from behind but sometimes you'll notice racehorses especially come from the front interesting and they're dragging. so when we take them off track we actually retrain them to use their behind oh okay i mean you would you would think that that would be a natural flow of meeting um no no uh, because and it's the same with pulling horses this is it's the same with like a plow horse they have to pull from the front Mm. So for the race horses, okay. they 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 have power in the back, but they tend to move like for their for front ends go before the rear end in a, in a way. 
Okay. So they're they're coming more forward. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Behind. And then and some trainers right now, inter- interestingly enough, there are some trainers who are training tr- uh, racehorses to have balanced top lines. Because that that's where the, the transmission of power comes in. It's when the top line is balanced and comes up. Um, and that's the work I do does this. And I'll be showing uh, afterwards. Is, is there going to be um, is this going to be up on YouTube? Oh, yeah, it, it's I, I post it usually about an hour, an hour and a half. It depends on how long it, it takes YouTube to unpack it. <laughs> Got it. Because I try to get it up as quickly as I can. I have a before and after photo of my own horse. He's not a racehorse, but it shows that difference in how it released and what you can see. This, like visually, you can see the difference in yeah. how he holds himself. The posture changes. Um, and with humans, too. This, this structural release is done on people. It's a series of 10 or 12, depending on how your practitioner got their training. Mm-hmm. A Rolf, a Rolfer is 10. A Myers practitioner is 12. I think Heller workers are also 10. I had a Myers practitioner. I like that very, very much because they're gentle. Mm. it's energetic as well as being physical and that's how okay. i work on the horses so i'm kind of approaching it from more of a myers work okay. and heller work is kind of like that too okay um fash is very interesting because up until 2015 mm-hmm. it was considered wrapping paper packing peanuts and glue oh yeah connective <laughs> tissue and that's all it was Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And when you see it, I've, I've not to be too MI, TMI, but I have butchered animals and mm-hmm. you can see the bubbles in the fascia. Yes. Actually, you know. when I do, I do a live presentation. And one of the things that I do is I bring turkey legs mm. because that white stuff that's all over meat. Yeah. That's fascia. But we okay. misunderstood it because the moment the subject is no longer alive, the fascia doesn't do what the fascia does. Mm, okay. It has to be alive to be studied, which now, is... Now, what is what is the job of the fascia? What is the job of the fascia? That's an excellent question. It has a lot more jobs than we thought before 2015. Um so traditionally speaking, the fascia's job was structure, uh, um, connective tissue, structural connective tissue. So bones for like are connected with tissue, mm-hmm. um, ligaments, tendons are part of that system. Yeah. The, um, the stuff that kind of forms the organs. Mm. The skeleton of the, like the outside of your organs, that thing that makes the liver look like a liver. Instead is of fashion. a blobby thing that is going everywhere. <laughs> yes. Well, I guess it's the yes. same principle as the, oh, uh, the mentesis that holds mm-hmm. everything in the belly and all of the, the internal organs and the, the guts and, okay. it's That is fascia. Okay. So That's mentesis is fascia. Sheet. That's okay. a fascial sheet. I believe so. I believe so. Okay. Um, the, the terminology, I'm quite wrong, but I'm thinking that that is. And the thing about fascia is it is quite literally in every cell of every animal's body. It is restricted to the animal kingdom. Yeah. It is not in plants. I'm positive plants have a corresponding system. But every time I Google it, I keep getting uh, returns back on plant fascination, hmm. which is really interesting. You ever see like like a plant that just looks weird? Oh, yeah. Like, look, you mutant. That's a fascination. Hmm. I didn't know that until I was trying to look up plant fashion. That's how I found out. Interesting. OK. I thought. So but they have to have something that corresponds to that. So all animals have fascia. It is 10 times more innervated than muscle. Mm. It's in every cell of the body. So even though it myofascial, 
mm-hmm. but that's the fascia that's involved in the myo cell, in the muscle cell. But the okay. muscle is muscle. All right. And the fascia is fascia, but it's completely intertwined. It's very strange. And, and it's sort of like a duality. Interesting. Okay. And it's innervated. It's elastic. So you ever get up and you're like, oh, my God, my muscles are so sore. When I roll my shoulders, I can hear crack, crack, crack. And I think I don't know if that's uh, it's not cracking, but I know it's either really tight tendons or tight fascia running along my my scapula and my rib cage. That is crepitus. And if it's like a thunk, then that is a ligament. Okay. Um, And the ligament just kind of goes boing, boing. It's like a string. Like a yeah. guitar string, just kind of going. Yeah. Um, I have that over here because I have a torn rotator cuff. And I had limited range of motion. Yeah. Never got surgery for it. This is funny. When I was in school for equine uh, structural integration, mm-hmm. part of my education was that I needed to get structurally integrated. Wow. Okay. Because, yeah, well, I get I that. I need to know I what it's I'm you- doing. You you should optimally experience the journey that you're going to help other beings get through. Exactly. You know? Yeah. So I had this done. I have not had surgery on the shoulder, and now I've got like full range of motion. <laughs> I've been in full range of motion since I was twenty five. <laughs> I yeah. I can it's I can incredible. I can get my arms. Up, uh, but it it's there are times where I will have a twinge, and yeah, it's yeah, yeah. So go find a structural integration therapist and have the series because it will change your life. And it's not sure structural, structural integration, integration therapist. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. I would can look you for send somebody... me some links about that after this, and Absolutely. that way I can go ahead and put them on YouTube video as well. Absolutely. And awesome. I would highly recommend a Myers or Heller worker over a Rolfer. Okay. When I was in massage therapy school, I went to the Swedish Institute in New York in 1990. <laughs> and I remember one of the instru- one of the students asked about Rolfing and the instructor answered by saying, oh, that's when you get a client on your table and you reach into their back and you pull out their spine and you beat them to death with it (laughs) that's rolfing so that kind of scared the hell out of me for a while and then (laughs) they changed the name because i guess a lot of people were calling it that and referring like describing it thusly and now it's structural integration which I didn't know was rolfing. So here I am showing up at school for structural integration, not really knowing what I was going in for ultimately, because it didn't even say that on their website. Yeah, There was just a thing about them that I'm like, this, because there's a school right here local. I actually had to go down to Portland, mm-hmm. Oregon. I live in, I live near Seattle. So that's like a three hour drive. I had to yeah. stay there for a week Yeah, for three different weeks during mm-hmm. my education. Um, and it was insanity. I forgot. I lost my train of thought. Please excuse me. <laughs> oh, no, no, you're fine. It's it happens, back. A, it happens a lot here. <laughs> Thank, well, yes, I would assume it does. <laughs> In fact. Ah, uh, there you go. <laughs> maybe it'll help. It usually so, does. <laughs> back to the fashion. Let's just forget what I was saying about that and just go back to the fashion. If it comes, it comes. Okay. Um, it's in everything when we're stiff, when we're sore, that's your fascia. It's not the muscles so much. Yes, the muscles are incorporated, they're involved, but it's fascia. And because we've misunderstood this amazing system in our bodies forever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, we've got nine years where people realized, whoa, this isn't just wrapping paper. I yeah. thought it was blue. Well, I mean, what? if you if you think about it, you know, mankind, we're still all wearing diapers, throwing shit at each other, you know, yes. for, for for all we understand of the human body and and exactly how everything works together. 
you know, medicine is still catching up because this is a, a fantastic machine. Organisms are wonderfully designed. But in order to try to figure them out and make sure that you can maintain them in a healthy way, yes. that looks different from generation to generation as we make more realizations. I believe that the new information coming out about fascia is going to answer so many mysteries. I really hope so. There are, I, I cannot count the, in, the amount of, of friends and family that, that I have who are in staggering amounts of pain all day, every day. That nothing helps. Exactly. Like you can take you can take a leave, and it's like taking sugar pills. It won't do anything. Yeah. Because the fascia doesn't respond to that. So actually, let me. I'm going to pull up right now. Please. I am going to go ahead and pull up on my computer a list of vitamins and supplements that you can be taking for fascial health, and this can help relieve fibromyalgia pain. And this is coming directly from from health sources. Oh, uh, outstanding. Thank you. Yeah, this is not just, you know, I think so. This yeah. this is and I'll, I'll give you references because I didn't write them down with because I sent this to somebody earlier today. So I just happen to have it up. <laughs> um, so so the when, when this gets posted on the website, I will go ahead and provide those references so everybody can find them easily. I'll also be putting them on the YouTube video and I'll be posting them about uh, about them on Facebook. I, I want this information to get to as many people as it can help. Yeah, I agree. I This is why I'm out here doing this, because I know that knowing about the fascia and knowing that it's more than just a passive, passive um, structure. There are so many things. I mean, for the longest time, uh, medical science thought the appendix was just, oh, it's just a wiggly thing that the body doesn't need and it ruptures every once in a while. Right. No, it actually does something. (laughs) Is it a vestigial thing? Maybe, but it's still doing something. Yeah. Yeah. It's still there. Mm -hmm. And if it's there, we're not supposed to take it away. (laughs) Yeah. Unless it tries to kill you, in which case then maybe. Um, but going back to fascia, I mean, I think that we're looking at a future where surgical options are no longer going to be necessary because we're going to be able to do non-invasive medicine by changing the way we view the body and anatomy in general. Well, if you look back at some of the, um, psycho magic medicine, it's, you you know what I do besides the other. I'm a quantum healer. Yeah, but I mean it's it's I I tend to think that there's we're we're only just now starting to understand our connection to the energy inside us that can then connect to the energy outside us to get that's us That's the fascia. That's the fascia. So that's the connection right there. And this is a book I'm writing the book about this specifically about this oh my god you're on you got it so so that's what it is oh meditation manifestation psychics animal communication all are on the same frequency i'm wondering now i'm almost kind of like picturing the fascia as this like blue glowing energy web that just wraps around everything and then the skin goes over that to protect it if everything in your body except the fascia were gone, you would be a white webby, just a white webby shape of you. Yeah, there would there would be no separation of liver, nothing. lungs. Yeah, nothing. Maybe yeah. a hole where not even because it's in every cell, so you'll yeah. still have it there like a ghost. That's fascinating. Yeah, that's really that's exciting. Really, it is, and what's more exciting is that when you change your breath. You know how you get grounded? Oh, yeah. Like the breath of fire and the other Buddhist breathing techniques. They work. You're you're activating your fascia. Interesting. Because it's in every cell of the body. So it's not the brain. That intuition Mm -hmm. is fascia catching information. And then the brain processes it. How interesting. I mean, and what what would the world look like if we were all trained to tune into the messages that the fascia is sending us? <laughs> you know, it would. I would say you could watch my life for a week, and there you have it, because that's <laughs> I operate in this because this is what I do. Yeah. 
Yeah. When I'm working on a horse and this is when it came together. When I was working on horses, I know I'm working on fascia. Mm -hmm. When I'm working on fascia, I do a meditative breathing. When I'm around horses, I always drop into this frequency. When you breathe like that, it changes your vibration. You've yeah. heard change, you know, vibes. As, as much as new age has just corrupted the word vibration and frequency. It's still it, a, it's it, important it's valid. from a physics, from a yeah, physics yeah. standpoint, because oh, yeah. we're talking biophysics here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It, it is. It's yeah, it actually happens. <laughs> so, yeah, when you vibrate differently by by shifting with breath mm -hmm. and using the mind with intent. That's why intent is so important. So mm. case in point, I'm working on a horse horse. Like, let's say I'm working on his shoulder and he's just like, I will bite you. And I'm like, OK, I respect you. I will step out, like literally yeah. step out where I can't get hurt. Yeah. And I will energetically. From afar without touching and I know you've seen the video, um, but we can put a link to it because it's on TikTok. It's short. It's like a minute long. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But I can work on a body without touching the body. Yeah. Just by having my, if I'm not in that state, I can't do it. Yeah. Yeah. So I realized that, oh my God, it's the fascia. My fascia is communicating with that fascia and we can do it because quantum entanglement is real. Oh, wow. So we're the same thing. Mm -hmm. Intent, pulling energy and communicating with energy. Yeah. And that's how, and it's, and it is impossible without fascia. Yeah. Yeah. And then and un the and unfortunately, unfortunately, I mean, this is all, this is all fantastic, but this is not to say that anybody deserves uh, the pain they're in, the, the no. deserves the body issues they're having, that there is something that there, there is something that you did wrong to no. cause this. Cause that's not what be, is being said at all. It's, it's, it is a shift in perspective and no it's more than that this is a, a physical shift oh i know that... but but your perspective has to shift before oh, yeah. you can feel into that sh that actual shift you have to be open to that yes you have exactly. to and you have to breathe but i don't i don't even know if you have to be open to it because if you breathe deep into the solar plexus yeah you can't really control it not happening if you're doing it right yeah going to yeah. happen whether you expect it or not they're just yeah. going to be like what because uh, it, it feels like a tingle almost you can feel yeah. it all the way to your surface yeah we have a comment uh carlito diablo oh. hi thanks first time chatter it's uh hello wonderful to have you here thank you so much for joining us if you have any questions please <laughs> okay. by all means yeah. um but let me go ahead because i was going to say really quick before i forget the vitamins and supplements that people with fibromyalgia might want to start taking mm -hmm. for pain relief are uh, vitamins A, B1, B2, B3, B5, B6, B12. Isn't that like just I, B complex? It is. Okay. But if you're, you know, you're going, because some of them are individual. Than others. Okay. Right. Uh, you're going to want to take a C. C is super important. Okay. C and fascial health are, and I haven't quite figured out exactly why yet, but it is super important. Um, biotin, folic acid, mm -hmm. which you take prenatal. It's a, usually taken prenatal, but you can take that anytime. Mm -hmm. It also grows your nails really well. Uh, potassium, uh, calcium iron and zinc do keep in mind that these are best obtained through fruits vegetables their their origin of source as yes. opposed to giving the bullshit health vitamin industry tons of money not that it is total bullshit but there are so many competing companies that There's... it's hard to know who to trust it's not just that there's competing companies but sometimes these types of vitamins and minerals aren't bioavailable orally. Mm, yeah. In yeah. the same way. 
in the, in the way they extracted it. Um, one thing you can look to, though, is going to regenerative medicine, mm. which is a fairly new field. And, and it's it's popping. Regenerative medicine is is I, I think they tied. don't they have AI figuring that out. And so already you've got these really yep. huge leaps that are happening. Things are about to yes. get very interesting medically. Yeah, I'm actually getting I have a consultation with a doctor who does peptide therapies. Peptides are awesome. And I wish yep. they weren't so expensive. Yeah, me too. But the Wolverine but peptide is my favorite. I have <laughs> I have a beneficiary. Let, let oh, me put it that handy. way. I somebody that's who's handy. like, let's experiment. I'm like, guinea pig. Right? I'm like, why not? <laughs> yeah. I'm like all over it. So yeah, yeah. I, I have had um I like back in 2019, uh, I was diagnosed with fibromyalgia and I was like, oh, so that's why. There's like pain all the time. Um, yep. And it was just getting worse and worse. And then I finally uh, decided, okay, maybe I'll listen to somebody about my diet. So I talked to a, a dietitian, mm -hmm. And the first thing she said is like, you're on all of these supplements. Stop all of them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, yep. I'll give you a probiotic and I'll give you a, another, you know, a woman's multivitamin go off everything else um, and stop eating sugar. That's a big one. Because sugar is an inflammatory and people yes. don't fucking tell you that. That's and true. I was drinking two Mountain Dews a day. I was just, I mean, the amount of caffeine. Ah. And, and when I, when I stopped eating sugar, I was at 205. I'm now 175. And that's, you look fantastic. Thank you. That started in October. And and this is, I'm not, I'm not working out every day. I'm not going walking every day. I, I need to be. But this is all because I stopped eating Cause sugar. Sugar. Because sugar know? is kind of evil in that way. I mean, it, in moderation, it's in everything. everything okay. And it's, it's, it's insidious. And it just, especially corn, corn syrup. Fuck corn syrup. <laughs> I'm allergic to corn. I don't know whether that's a good thing or a bad thing. Well, I had <laughs> it's got to be frustrating. Disease. I have Crohn's disease and it turns out it's a corn allergy because I saw I figured it out. I had to reject modern medicine because mm -hmm. they have not got a handle on Crohn's. The way they treat it is yeah. wrong. Well, it doesn't it mostly happen to women? Mm, less and less these days. Interesting. I just, just I know that, that modern that. medicine is is very much uh, the template is white, male, male, affluent. Yep. That's who medicine is is has been supporting and and working on. Those are the medical right. models. It's one of the right. reasons why doctors still think that black people have a really high pain tolerance. So it doesn't matter if they hurt as much. I mean, just the, the, the things that you hear about it are just appalling. And so I was wondering if it was if it was a lack of sight um, in, in a, a gendered way on the medical side. I don't know about that myself. Like, pers I don't know if that's exactly the reason why. Okay. One of the issues with Crohn's is that it's not that there's a marker for Crohn's. Yeah. Crohn's is a disease of elimination, which yeah. is the stupidest pun. Thank you. It's a universe pun because nobody else came up with it. But I'm like, <laughs> you've got to be kidding me. You're going to call this a disease of elimination? Really? It's a yeah. pooping disease. Come on now. <laughs> So now Ma, I, Ma can't go. She's got the shitting disease. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. And that was you can't my really life. Leave the house. You know, that I mean, was, it's just. This was my life. Yeah. For yeah, yeah. decades, decades. Yeah. And I've, I have several friends was, with Crohn's as well. I had, I did elimination and challenge three times because it didn't work the first two. And I'm like, no, something's wrong. Something's wrong. And you know what it was? Mm -hmm the medications they have corn as a binding ingredient Shit. 98 percent of all medications over the counter and prescription have corn in them i did not know that 
most people don't. I well, found out because I had to. It seems like it seems like the corn lobby really does have a stranglehold on this nation because oh, yeah. uh, you, you've got pet foods that are heavily corn, uh, heavily corn. And maybe you have other things in there, but it's mostly corn because why corn is cheap. Yep. It's but subsidized. We have, a, we have a question from Carlito Diablo. Would yes, Carlito. P, would PEMF work as a delivery system to the fashion network. I love peptides. Absolutely. Yes, I, and I am a PEMF practitioner. Good question. Outstanding. I love PEMF. Um, P, all right, so fascia is comprised of an extracellular matrix, mm -hmm. which is sort of, and, and let me show you what that's supposed to look like when it's healthy. Maybe with less tearing. <laughs> well, that's unhealthy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but I mean, being able to pull it without it rupturing. Right. Okay. Right. So when it's it's all elastic because it has elastin. Okay. And it has reticulum, which is that's the stuff that's holding together your organs. Mm, okay. So the reticulum okay. is like think think like you know when you buy a bag of onions and it's got that net bag. Yeah. Reticulum it's is the like netting. that. It's okay. the netting. So the reticulum is the netting, and then you have the extra matrix, extracellular matrix, which now is, is like is the reticulum slime. the reticulum and the fascia are they like this? Are they? It's are, in. It's comp no. The fascia is made of. Gotcha. Okay. So the fascia elastin. Is okay. Elastin, so it, elastin, reticulin, collagen. Okay. Hyaluronic acid and water. Pretty much all it is. Wow. And it's all over in everything. And the reason why PEMF, and this is so cool that you asked about PEMF. This just delights <laughs> me to no end. The reason why PEMF is so effective for fascia issues is because... Fascia is likely structured water. Mm. Well, we we are. It's a know, non -Newtonian high fluid. percentage of water anyway. <laughs> right, and it's non-Newtonian fluid. Mm. So we're probably structured water. We have iron in our bodies. We are magnetic. We are electric. When you put that that Earth pulse, because it kind of coincides with the human frequency well and you you think of uh someone being electrified or electrocuted it's because there's water in your body it's because yep, yeah it's a it right so structured water happens when you you can make structured water with a pemf device oh wow mm -hmm. i do and i drink it and it's fabulous we need to fabulous talk. We need yes, to talk. Yes. <laughs> um, I also believe that we can do infoceuticals, meaning that water retains information. Oh gosh, yes. Well, I mean, if you and, if you think about it, it it's we come from an amoeba that was the first non-plant creature, prob and probably electricity got us here. Yeah, you know, yeah. I mean. Human human beings are literally. I mean, we talk about we talk about tribes and we talk about nations and we talk about our people and their people. And I'm like, we are related all... to the mosquitoes. We're related yes. to the gnats. We're related to the elephants. It's. I really wish that that evolution would not stick just to. I mean, I I, I understand that that there is a a simian line, but right there, we... there's there's different classifications and kingdoms and, and yeah. phylum and everything else the that hominids goes. are different than four leggers but but all of us have the ability to to plug into and this is going to sound a, a little uh out there but uh we all have the ability to plug into this almost like a, a an energetic net uh, like a nexus of information it's not of, almost like of plants. It's not almost of like animals. it is. Animal communication happens when you drop that frequency. And the reason why all of this happens with the fascia, and it's through the fascia, 
the reason it's able to happen is because no atom touches any other atom. We know that. Mm. Atoms don't touch. We smash them together and crazy shit happens, yeah. but atoms don't naturally touch, meaning that we're just vibrations. Mm. We're very dense vibrations, but we are not really solid, as solid as we seem. Well, this is, this is, I always saw this as an encounter suit for space yes. exploration. This is exactly. a planet that we are on. This is a vehicle for a consciousness that allows me to, to draw breath, to eat, to do all the things that, that yep. this body needs to do while my, there are, there are some people who call it a tibonage. There are uh, some people who call it a higher spirit, but it's, it's almost like a, a higher representation of you comes it's, down here to be peon for a day or it, it's out there. Years. <laughs> the fact, well, here's my theory on this is that the, the soul actually does not, consciousness does not exist anywhere within us. That's the higher being that's outside of our physical body but it's there in the ether yeah, yeah and it's yeah. all the same it's all the same right you me everybody else but this yeah. is my experience here now yeah it's the fascia that communicates with it it's the brain that processes that mm. now i know that there have been meditative techniques in in a variety of of faiths and paths where you can sit in contemplation or um, meditation and reach out to gain knowledge instead of staying, I, staying in and, and kind of opening up to the knowledge that's already there. Have you ever done Akashic record readings? I've done soul do retrievals. That. Um, I've done um, Akashic record readings and um, you can manipulate things in there. I have not yet been able to be fully present with the, the Akashic record. It's more, if I need information, it ends up coming into my head. And yeah. At some point, I would, at some point I want to go to that motherfucker, like a library. <laughs> it is <laughs> a it library. Is. I want to, you know, it's really as much as I can. I do readings for other people and you can contact me if you're interested in having quantum healing, uh, Akashic readings. I, I do all sorts of things with the spiritual realm because it's all in the fascia. I do animal yeah. communication um, and I do quantum healing on animals as well because mm -hmm. it's, it works. Yeah. Um, but that whole Changing your vibration, which sounds all woo and stupid, but I'm not kidding when I say change the vibration, you change the universe, yeah. not just your universe. And your fascia is your, it's like anatomic psychic apparatus. Mm. So I think it, what I was starting to say about the Akashic Records, I think this is really funny because I do readings for other people. And sometimes I get there and I'm given a book. Mm -hmm. The guardians will hit like, you know, I'll find that person's book and mm -hmm. I'll be able to look and turning pages and I can look through, and, you know, it opens to what I want it to open to and I can find the information. Yeah. I did one reading. I was handed a scroll. <laughs> it was like, it was insane. I'm like, whoa, you oh, are fantastic. old. You've been here a long time. <laughs> yeah. And there have been like lifetimes before there were humans. You, you find all of that there because time has no, no real meaning there at all. Yeah. 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 And our souls are eternal. Well, it, we are. Um, <laughs> Grant Morrison many, many years ago um, was at a conference where he talked about how time is where it, it time is where you grow a larva because you can't really learn anything outside of time because there's you already have it everything is is omniscient right yes but if you want to if you want to learn something then you in you in what are you oh 
incorporates not the right word. <laughs> but you 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 choose a body and you live the life to learn the thing. Did, I agree with that. It's a choice that I learned this in the Akashic Record, actually doing an Akashic Record reading for myself, but I chose my dad. Oh, wow. Because he was going, he wasn't even a doctor, but he mm. was going to be a doctor. Yeah. And in order for me to have the journey I'm on, I needed to disconnect and understand how human doctors can be. There's no better way than having your dad Oof. who's a doctor and me being able to go, you know what? You're a fucking yeah. idiot. You are wrong. There are a lot that of times. Wrong. Yeah, there are and a lot of times. Back. Oh, I, I agree. I agree. You know, he's actually come back when he was retired before he passed. He was just like, yeah, medicine's wrong. You've got to do with what works for you. I'm like, yes, thank you. Which is why I kind of disconnected from, from traditional allopathic medicine altogether. Yeah. They were killing me. I, I recognize think, that. I think that, um, again, you've got the lowest common denominator or the, the, I guess maybe the highest common denominator that medicine caters to, you know? No, it's the lowest common denominator. Okay. <laughs> because they kind of group everything together and then you kind of have to pull it out and figure out, okay, but what's the real root? You're just addressing these symptoms. Yeah. And then you can't, you can't say that medicine is going to cure everything, force people to pay for, you know, insurance because otherwise they won't, they won't get the care they need. But then you go I, to a doctor and you're you are outside of their realm of experience. You're outside of their realm of experience. And my dad, who was a surgeon and had cancer, uh, told me in a very frank conversation, do not ever expect there to be a cure for anything because there are no profits in cure. There is profit in maintenance. Yeah. That's it. That's that literally it. So wait, I want to go back. I want to, because I brought the props. We're going to play with the props. Awesome. Going okay. Back, <laughs> so we're going to go back to physical fashion, not spiritual, the, the spiritual connection there. This is actual. All right. So if you're wearing a shirt and you're not wearing a good shirt for this, <laughs> but if you can kind of, if you're wearing a shirt and you're watching this kind of grab around your armpit. Like right, and right here? Not yet. Not yet. Okay. So first, just kind of lift your arm up. Ah. See how it goes. Just normal. And then for you, what you're going to do is you're going to take it from down here uh -huh. underneath. Yeah. And you're going to twist it up real hard. Twist the, now, the, the skin? Twist your fabric. No, your fabric. Your shirt. Oh, oh yeah. because the grabbing your shirt. Okay, so and twisting it up. No, put your arm down. Okay, you have to put your arm down first, and then twist okay. it up. Uh -huh. Now raise your arm again. Is it as easy? I oh, see. It's going to be hard without a t-shirt because you don't have the sleeve. That's odd. <laughs> it felt odd though, right? Did you? Where did you feel that? Did you feel different? Well, the the I've got a. It feels like a little sharp pain uh, here, but not so much that it's bad. I almost want to try this you, arm because it's not as bad in this arm. Try so. the other arm. So okay. do it just normal so that there's no okay. resistance whatsoever. Now you're going to take it from underneath. Okay. You're so pull it down and twist it. So yeah. That's I don't have I much. <laughs> you're going right. to take, take your shirt, pull uh -huh. it down and kind of twist it and okay. try to raise your arm again. Okay. Is it the same? Interesting. Is it the same? No. Huh. Describe what's different and it where. Felt like, it felt like it was a little easier to raise my arm. And it was kind of through here. When you were twisting it? Yeah. Yeah. The problem here was the, the tank top. That's not supposed gotcha. to be like that. It, All right, it's I actually can, so. I can put on a shirt. <laughs> you know what? While you're doing that, I'm going to talk about this. Go put on okay. a shirt. Real quick. All right. I'll be right back. We're going to use this prop in the meantime, because she, Jada is going to experience it. But in the meantime, what we're doing is imagine this tensegrity ball is your fascia. So this is the body right here. 
let's say it's here because you do not always fully extend it. So let's say you're just kind of neutral right there. Now, let's say you get an injury and you have a scar. Now, you're stuck. So here you can extend fully. But if you hold, there's only so far it can go. All right. There you are. All so right. you're, that's your easier side. So yeah. feel what it feels like to bring your arm up. Mm, yeah. Okay. Now, taking, pinching right about here. Right at right the where right your up. arm meets your shoulder, like your shoulder and your arm come together. Uh-huh. Upper arm. Kind of take your shirt, twist it up. Like put your arm down. You have okay. to put your arm down first. Okay. So down, so, twist it up. So like here? Yeah. And okay. then twist and, it up. Uh-huh. Oh, because hang on. This is. Because you want to twist it. Yeah. Uh -huh. You definitely need to twist it. Well, any direction doesn't matter, but twist it up and now raise your arm again. If you're not feeling a difference, you have to pull a little tighter on the shirt and pull just to really, because you might have to exaggerate it just to be able to feel it. Okay. I can the see The resistance it. is helping. Interesting. Okay, so it's the resistance that's helping, but the resistance isn't supposed to be there. It's limiting the range of motion. Well, the resistance from twisting the shirt was helping. Right. It, it made it, I don't know. For you, it made it feel better. But the problem is for most people, when you do that, yeah. Without it, you know, you have free range of motion. Yeah. But when you do this, you've limited range of motion. It uh, pulls. Yeah. So what I was saying about the tense equity ball. So if your fascia is healthy, it slides. It slides okay. and it glides. And it, okay. it, it moves and it moves with you. And when this is happening and you're moving around and you're jumping up and down and you're doing things, you can extend and you can jump and squish in and everything else. Right. Mm -hmm. But let's say and then we, we're going to make it neutral. Kind of neutral. I don't want to squish it in too far because we're not always contracted all the way. Yeah. 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 Um, and then I'm going to just take two little spikes here. Mm -hmm. Like, let's say that this is a scar, an injury. Mm -hmm. And then you try to pull and then this part maybe goes but only so far and then what well, only so far and oh even less mm -hmm. and even here it's still impacted even yeah. though it's down here and okay. that is because your fascia provides your body with tensegrity interesting it's your tensegrity ball interesting yeah so oh, that's pretty it's, cool right so we have to keep it healthy. It's so yeah. important. So yeah. drink water, drink coconut. Coconut water is the best. There's something about coconut water that, that nutritionally is just so bioavailable. And it's a hydration that, that really just talks to the, the fascia. Okay. I keep is there, is like there something other than uh, coconut water that does that? Coconut water, I think, is the best. Okay, I'm just that, thinking I, of I'm thinking of uh, biosustainability uh, mm. because it, it's when when we talk methods of of uh, correcting some sort of a physical ailment, we have to be aware uh, of how much how much availability there is, and are we taking away taking that away from an indigenous population? That's I think fair. that's yeah. That was that was that's my question fair. about is if there's anything other than coconut water that people. Can I'd have to research it. Okay, that, that's just you know what I know. Yeah, yeah. Because true but, sustainability is being able to find the things in your habitat that right. because you're you're living in your your I want to say biome, but that's internal. That's um, internal. But right. your but, your external habitat, there are medicines that will work better for you because you've been a part of the land so long. Right. That and that that's absolutely valid. That is yeah. absolutely valid. It's just that there's something about the bioavailability of the coconut specifically, and I don't know gotcha. why, other than it might no, I can't even say why, because I do not know. Ah. Uh, omega fatty acids. 
Mm. I do know that it's so, so you would probably want to ingest things that are super high in collagen, like a bone broth. Okay. Um, okay. Okay. If you're vegan, that's not going to work. So maybe, yeah. you know, coconut is probably your best option. If you're vegan, yeah. bone broth is going to be a good option. If you're not. Carlito um, Diablo says beet juice is good for your cardiovascular system. Yes, it's excellent. It is excellent. But th- this is sort of, I'm, I'm thinking fascia. Yeah. More than cardiovascular in this yeah. particular yeah, case. Yeah. Um, yeah. Beet juices and for cardiovascular, also cayenne. Mm, yeah. Cayenne is remarkable. Well, cayenne um, also has a high C content as well. Yes. Yes. So oh, and it, it does work. And, and you know, all the things that they say, oh, you should take turmeric for pain. I kind of think it's working on the fascia. Interesting. Because I was thinking about it. I was taking turmeric and, um, and black pepper. Mm-hmm. And that that was helping i imagine it did yeah yeah i'm Absolutely. thinking about going back on it because it, it's the storms have been rough over the last couple of days <laughs> ouch yeah yeah so fascial health that's that's really what it's all about it's hydration you can take hyaluronic acid supplementation is going to be very helpful um are there any specific Biotin. foods? Like any specific meats, vegetables? Not beans? that I know of yet. Okay. Okay. Um, foods that are high in omega, uh, linoleic and, and oleic acids, fatty acids, um, omega, you know, omega 3, 6, 9. Yeah. All of those are going to be healthy for fascia. Mm-hmm. Um, but it really has to do with hydration because if you're not well hydrated, Oof. then your fascia rips. And, and I would say tears. nine, nine out of 10 of us are, are dehydrated, actively yes. dehydrated. This is a, yep. I think this is about 40 ounces. I try to drink two of these a day. I am not so good with it. And I can tell when I haven't had enough. Mm-hmm. And I don't believe that water in its natural form is necessarily the most bioavailable for us anyway. Mm. I, that's kind of why I drink structured water a lot. Mm. I think it's better hydrating. I think that there's a, an uptake component that, that is given when you pulse water with a PEMF. Okay. Okay. I'll look there, into there's that. a lot of research. Uh, emo- what's really stupid was Dr. Emoto who took mm-hmm. the photos of the structured water and, and that was oh, yeah. the guy who did the, the words and it changed everything. Yeah. What pissed me off about that was that they got results. He got results. But then it turned out that the results weren't quite dramatic enough. So they doctored the photos. That's unfortunate. I know. That makes but, me sad. It makes me really sad because it makes it because all of a sudden you you threw a you know threw some sand into the gears on that. Yeah, it yeah. it introduces the whole well this can't possibly be real. I'm like no it is. They just wanted to show it better and by doing that they took away credibility. Yeah, if they had if they had placed a disclaimer that was easily seen, these are embellished photos em- or enhanced even enhanced. Say yeah. But no, yeah. they they tried to push that as this is what we got. And that was not what they got. Oh, man, that's yeah, that's disappointing. And it, it, it uh, is. It, I'm guessing so many people don't understand how badly that undermines the point they're trying to make. You know, I'm sorry. I was gonna call. You, okay? Are you there? Yeah, I got. Oh, you. yeah. I was, getting, I was getting a call. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, man. So I'm sorry, what was I saying before I got muted out and had to jump out of a call? Uh, structured uh, structured water. Structured water, about. right. So because fascia is maybe structured water, mm-hmm. drinking structured water would then feed the fascia much better and hydrate the fascia. Um, I don't know if we're going to get any real answers to any of what I'm saying until we have better quantum computing. And I have a strange feeling that if the dystopian 
hellscape that that could be looming if it <laughs> doesn't happen and somehow everybody goes yeah this is bullshit let's just start taking care of everybody let's just start that making sure that you know everybody everybody can have a good life everybody has easy access to resources and and trust me i i know and i'm not going to say that's a pipe dream i'm, I'm not going to say that's a fairy tale because it's, it's no. possible we, it's possible we can we can make that happen you know it's it's not a fairy tale it's not you know fantasy poo bullshit um <laughs> you know sticking sticking with the the current system that hasn't worked for literally thousands of years isn't getting us anywhere no nope. you know nope. it, it just uh, you know it's hard to live in a capitalist society when you don't quite vibe with capitalism <laughs> I get it. Yeah, it it is a uh, it's a hard sell for me. I'm not. A yeah, capitalist. hi. I mean, yes, I buy things and I have we like have, shit and yeah, but I mean, I have, not, have an income. I I have yeah. an income. You yeah, know, but I don't. I, I, I don't. I don't do anything for status. Like social status in my st mind is. I don't do anything for status, and I don't do anything to tear anybody else down. It's so and that's important. something that's on, like this society is so focused on on not building up but tearing down at the end of the day. You it's like you know who can you trust? Who can you trust? Well, why is that even a problem? I think the biggest problem is that you you have a society with heavily dominant influences or dominator influences, yeah. and in order for someone to be dominant there have to be subjects there have to be people who are submissive and uh capitalism in my mind it's poison because it fosters competition where you try to tear your com competitor apart as Instead opposed to collaboration which is going to make something huge and amazing and beautiful and now, imagine what they could have done if edison and tesla worked together hmm but the reason Tesla lost his funding is that they couldn't weaponize free or they couldn't they couldn't profit on free electricity for all. So mm -hmm. JP Morgan cut the the funding for Wardenclyffe Tower and then everything got shifted over to Edison because that was that was a money making platform and yeah. Tesla never got it. Yeah. He he died broke and in love with a pigeon i hope that pigeon was grateful <laughs> i hope so but yeah it feels like we're slowly starting to come to a bigger understanding of our place in the universe and our place on this planet and our relation our our place in relation to other people and society uh, to i think slowly yeah, very, it's it's very surely slowly. happening more than it did 30 years ago, because 30 years ago, true? people were still in that violent, abusive, like, just, oh, my God. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, things are definitely improving. Gen, Gen Alpha is super interesting. Gen Alpha, I love these kids. Yeah, I love these kids. They have a different energy. And I, when I say that, I don't mean that like they have a different, like, like the social vibe. I mean that they are working on a different energy. Yeah. They well, are maybe evolved. Yeah. I, well, as, as like, I remember reading an article about uh, female elephants in Africa who are starting to uh, evolve no tusks so that they're not hunted for their ivory anymore because that's what evolution yeah. does evolution yeah. provides a pathway for survival mm -hmm. and the more so, i was going to say i'm just not to interrupt you but, no, no, but there are so many videos out there of kids in like grade school kids who are just like walking in carrying like i just picked up this possum and like just petting it and this is and the possum's like what's up and everybody's cool and communicating and the mom's like what right and it's just like these kids are just 
automatically able to do this because they're mm. born in the vibration. Well, I'm sure of it. It's in order for, for animal, animals to feel safe enough around you to come up and let you touch them, yeah. there has to be a, di- th- there has to be a to certain you. perspective that you have. These animals are coming up to these kids. Oh, no, no, I get it. But kids yeah. probably understand that they are part of everything as opposed exactly. to it's a pet that I'm going to keep and feed or it's something that I could kill. It's, it, you know, I mean, it doesn't I, belong to me. It belongs with me. Yeah. And man, I if, I was, if I was a, if I was an animal and I ran into a kid that would pet my belly, <laughs> like I would, I'd be, okay. Yeah. Whatever. You know, I'm just to put me yeah. <laughs> Got a cookie. Cool. You know, Oh, neck scratches. I don't get that in the wild, you know? Yeah. That's like how many cool. possums Thanks. know how to give neck scratches? <laughs> no, <laughs> but yeah, I think that the reason why though is that these kids just naturally have this vibration that some of, that the rest of us have to work towards. Yes, and I and I, it's I think part of survival are... and being part of everything. I think we're watching the the demise of a, a way of life, a way of perceiving things. Yep. And whenever that happens, you have a really determined fight on your hands. Yep. Um, ha, one true cripple. I'm a sucker for belly putts too. Hey, dude. <laughs> I. <laughs> um. Fuck, I forgot what I was saying. <laughs> he likes belly scratches, and we're evolving vibrationally. Yes. Um, there's, there's a, a book I encountered recently, uh, called the gene keys. And it is, it's a fascinating exploration of the idea that, um, there are 64 gene keys within our DNA and they can be activated by, being aware of what they what they resemble what they control and you can move from each key has a shadow aspect a gift aspect and a siddhi aspect and the, the yeah. siddhi aspect is kind of going beyond humanity like mm-hmm. not not so much beyond humanity but humanity in its next form right mm-hmm. and a lot of the shadow is very much don't be a dick you know, like really, don't don't be a dick just, and and try to not fall for the propaganda that mm-hmm. your country and your society sells you about how the how, how you're supposed to live your life. You know, don't be right. abusive. Be be a helpful member of the community. Give to the community. You know, I mean, be be a part of a community. And yeah. some of us are so isolated because we're terrified of rejection. Mm-hmm. And, and that is also a fear that is taught. But mm-hmm. when we find community we really connect with, a lot of our health problems kind of ease down. Not all of them, but they ease down because there's somebody that, that hears you. Yeah. Not everybody around you is going, Jesus, could you stop talking about that? Or you can't be in that much pain. You're finally being heard. And that changes your perspective. And and almost it it kind of changes your vibration a little bit to be seen. Mm-hmm. And when you yep. change your vibration, you literally change the universe. Yep. So just being seen is yeah. so important. Yeah. Right? Just so important. Horses tell me Horses. <laughs> they do. It, when you say that, though, it, they need to be seen because they are living in our world, our human civilization, yeah. with us, and they're not always seen for who they are. Well, I mean, um, we've we have uh, relegated humanity has relegated horses to workers. You know, right. they are. Uh, they are not paid for their work. I mean, we give them grain, you know, hopefully yeah. we give them a nice pasture. We give them a nice place to live. But there are also horses, I'm I'm sure, in other 
in other places that are not uh, true. There are horses else. here. Yeah. There are horses right here in the good old U.S. of A. that are oh, not yeah. treated well. Well, there are horse Thank rescue you. organizations because people will starve their horses and beat their horses. Yes, you know? this is true. And there, there's still a, you know, there, yeah, no, I'm, we're, that's a whole other podcast. <laughs> but my point so if being. We, if we do that, I have a friend, another horse friend of mine. Actually, I have several horse friends. So we we're going to do, do a, a horse podcast. One. We should do a horse podcast. We should do that because I communicate with them all the time. And I can tell you that, yes, they need to be seen. They need to be understood. And when they don't, when they're not understood, they suffer just like we do. It's no different. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like I've had some that like yesterday I had one that I spoke to and she was I was putting a blanket on her. Mm hmm. And she, they've got like one of the, the straps got twisted and it wasn't a big deal. It wasn't like, you know, hurting her in any way. She's like the princess and the pea. Yeah. So yeah. she was just like ah, about it. And I looked at her. I'm like, what? And I'm like, oh, it's your strap. And I fixed it. And she just went, oh, thank you. <laughs> you heard me. Well, it's like a baby trying to communicate to a parent that it's yeah, hungry or can't, that it needs that to sleep. There's no if you if you are unable to communicate if you're un unable to be understood that's mm -hmm. got to be immensely frustrating and especially for for i think of nonverbal autistic human beings how frustrating yeah. must must it be to be misunderstood constantly yep by the neurotypical I, people around you you know i am <laughs> So my husband is autistic. My kid is autistic. I've, you know, my friends are autistic, but I don't have a lot of experience with nonverbal people. Yeah. 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 But that whole being misunderstood frustration mm -hmm. and feeling like, like an alien. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, you watch, we've been watching resident alien and I just keep looking <laughs> at my husband going, is he autistic or are you guys just from another planet? What's going on here? I tend to think I tend to see autism as an evolutionary trait. As, I think that it's a step up. Yeah, I think that that's um, it has been my experience that a lot of the autistic people and and uh, people with a bit of the tism, as I say, um, they are I am the... highly empathic yes. yeah, and highly, highly connected to the the world compared to other people but also shut it out that's a choice and it's necessity i get it i yeah. get it yeah and that's why because they're misunderstood yep so yeah. but they're connected to and feel like nobody's connected to them well it, it's kind of like, like they've got there. they've got that flow of connection to everything but the people who, around them who have cut off their own connection right so now right. there is a lack most of understanding people, most people are like that though they're not really living in the world they're not mm -hmm. even living outside of themselves yeah it's just you know how many I, people I get up times? I go to work I drink I fuck my wife I go to sleep and I do that five days a week and then I watch the game on the Saturday and I'm just like is that 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 that's insane to me that that would right. be but they believe that that's what you do because that's what they do because everybody does that. Yeah. You know, that, we that, are, we are a species that is really, really good at, at distracting ourselves. <laughs> yes. Yes. That's absolutely true. Yeah. Um, but part of the problem is that we really don't get out of our own heads. Most people. Yeah. I think and there, you we've, got, are... we've got self narration as well. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. if, if you, if you, try to listen to your mind when you look at a thing or you engage with a thing, usually your head goes, that's blue. And sometimes it'll come out of your mouth. That's blue. And it, it's, it, it, it's like, there's a constant narrator. And if you can kind of put the kibosh on the narrator, it's like, dude, I'm already seeing the thing. You don't need to tell me the thing. <laughs> your mind gets a little less cluttered. <laughs> yep. Oh, for God's sake. Ooh, Carlito Diablo I, is coming back with consciousness is 
composed sinusoidal waves, and this new species of human hypothesis could be a recalibration to a higher frequency. Autism could be, the, be this re recalibration to a higher frequency. Yes, it could. That's what I'm thinking, too. Yep. I agree. Absolutely yep. agree with that statement. Yeah. Just because. Thank you, Carla. Yeah, thank you. Um, it, it Just because you are unable to thrive in a world that is made specifically and rigidly For to neurotypical you. standards. It's like, no wonder the, the rest of us are pulling our fucking hair out. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. I mean, I have ADHD. So Same. a squirrel. You know, it's... Mm -hmm. that, that's why I go over here, bubble, bubble, bubble. <laughs> but I'm telling yeah. you that hyper-focus, it's the shit. When it oh, hits, yeah, when that's engaged, oh, damn, that's how I'm getting book written. That's how I'm getting my book written. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I and wrote 80,000 words in like in two months because it just it's I call it the the fire hose of inspiration. I like <laughs> and it. And you're just trying to get it done as quickly as you can. Like, holy fuck. I, Try you know to get it done before it's not there anymore. <laughs> that's the other yeah. part is just like, oh, my God, it's there in its entirety. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. it's like, what, what was I saying? I don't know what I was saying. <laughs> yeah. 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 But the book, the book's going to have a lot of the, the consciousness stuff because the fascia is so involved in yeah. consciousness, in pain, mm. in our existence, oh, wow. in our physical existence. Without fascia, we would be pawned. Very, very <laughs> polluted pond. At, at the best, we would be ochre jellies going through a dungeon with a cluster of organs. <laughs> no, we wouldn't have the jelly because the jelly is the fascia. That, that's, that's right. Oh, we'd just be that's blobs the, floating. We'd just be a, no, you'd lose the blob. You'd just be a puddle. Oh. You would be an extremely polluted pond. Blech. Blech. Well, I, humans turn back into that. We liquefy. Yes. Right. Because you the know? fascia dies. And that's the first thing that goes. When you die, they're thinking yeah. now because they haven't been able to do this in dissection. They had no idea that it's dynamic. Wow. They thought it was passive. Well, of course they, they did because, because they're only operating on, you know, dead people. You know, right. I'm guessing when you're... When when you come in for a medical malady and the surgeon has you open, they're not going to be poking around for that. They're going to be taking the shit out that doesn't work and putting shit that works in. <laughs> That's what they do. I remember. Hi, authenticata. My, I remember my dad um, telling me when he was in medical school. I was in um, massage therapy school for people back in ninety. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and he was telling me he was trying to see if he could get a human autopsy arranged for me to witness. Oh, wow. Okay. He did not. Ah, uh, yeah. I'm going to say, because yeah. I don't know if I could have handled that one. Um, I'm, I'm fascinated by biology. I, I, I'm fascinated, but I don't need to be in the same room with a cadaver work. I, I don't need that. Yeah, um, a necromancer. I'm okay with the dead. <laughs> no, I like, I'm, I guess soon, en soon enough. I'll deal with it soon enough. Yeah. It could be a long time from now. It's still soon enough. Yeah. Um, yeah. But he told me that when he was learning anatomy and doing dissection work, that they would just remove fascia because it's like the shit's all over everything and you can't see the anatomy through it. What ended up happening? Were there, were there studies where they showed what ended up happening to the patients afterwards? God that seems like such a missed opportunity for knowledge. I know. I know. Because, but they didn't know that it's a system. They just thought it was, like I said, wrapping yeah. paper, packing peanuts, and glue. Yeah. And that's all it was. Yeah. And then mm. it turns out, oh, shit, this shit has 10 times more nerve endings than the muscles? What? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, keep in mind that it, at one point, um, people thought against washing with soap <laughs> right because they didn't right. believe in germs <laughs> that wasn't real yeah <laughs> there so, are foul humors in the body sir foul humors and nothing else <laughs> we will treat it with cocaine and ghosts well and leeches 
and leeches. <laughs> Although chiropractic is like i love chiropractic i firmly believe in it but did you know that the man who came up with the idea for chiropractic was actually using a ouija board when that came to him wow yeah wow i did most people don't know that yeah i did not know that yeah no it came during a seance (laughs) it came (laughs) that's fantastic fantastic. i love it hey it worked wherever Mm -hmm. it comes from man you know who's to say it's not yeah, right. You know, I talk to the dead all the time. As long as it works, it works. I talk to the dead all the time, and I've gotten confirmation that it's absolutely true because I had somebody describe his murder to me. Oh, wow. For his mother. And that was one of the hardest sessions I've ever had to do. Yeah. I'm I'm That's glad that I don't... don't get the storytellers. I just get I just get the ones that are fragmented because mm-hmm. they've been they've been forgotten. Um, yeah. and their, their haunts at, at that point. So there's not a lot of, I, I get, I get verbal message sometimes, but a, a lot oh, of this guy showed me everything. Yeah, no, thanks. I got, I got a movie. I didn't yeah. need that. I yeah. didn't need it. And I don't, and I, I don't work. I don't do psychic work for people because yeah. I, I can't handle it. Well, I do for so much. Yeah. There's only so much you, you can, you know, I mean, that's, mm. That was too much. I'm like, wow. I get that. It was hard. That was a hard one. Anyway. Anyway, I'm going to have to go soon. That is completely fine. I want to thank you so much for your time. And do we have any questions before I go, though? Oh, yeah. Let's do a little question and Q&A. (laughs) A-M-A. All right. It can be an AMA. <laughs> yeah, Authenticata, we're uh we're talking about fascia and the its purpose uh within the body. And in the universe. And in the universe and in the as a, Our as a mesh the that connects us to the, the meshes that everybody else has. Yep. Yeah, I always saw um in in my mind there is a connected web of healers all over the planet. And those who find the web, it's kind of like something you pop into and then you bring up energy, you give it to the the circle that is currently uh live and directing energy at the at the time. And then, mm-hmm. okay, now I'm going to go back to bed because you have you have a lot of people that are that are dedicated workers that stay up in that that healing web or that you know that shamanic web circle. Mm-hmm. And uh, <clears throat> I I live there because I work with horses and I'm always around the horses, so I literally live in that vibration. Yeah, yeah, it's exhausting, <laughs> but it also feeds me. Yeah. But if I were if I hadn't been doing this my whole life. I do mean my whole life. Yeah. Um, I mean, I've been riding horses since I'm four years old. Wow. And this this vibration is just, that's my horse vibration. If I'm around horses, that's how I feel. Yeah. yeah. It comes from love. Oh, that's fantastic. I am not seeing any questions. If you've got right. a hop up, that is okay. I do. I do. I have to get to a barn. I have a <laughs> barn thing. Uh, outstanding. Thank you so much for your time and for your information. And when you get a chance to get links to me, I will yes. go ahead and post them. And oh, Poke me you... tomorrow. Okay. I do have a question. Uh, oh, Authent- question. Authenticata is saying, I remember hearing a study suggesting things like fibro or inflammation, uh, et cetera, of the fascia, thus yes. giving credence to people's persistent pain. We were talking about that earlier and yes. We did. And yep. let me let me tell you uh let me repeat this there are so the, that's the reason why when you have fibromyalgia pain you can take an NSAID, you can take a leave, you can take ibuprofen. It's not going to help. Yeah. Because that doesn't work on fascia. Yeah, it works um, on muscles, it, but yeah. it works on muscles, but it doesn't work on fascia. Mm. And fascia is so involved in everything. And as we said before, you can have like a holding here and then you'll feel it back here. 
yeah, because yeah. Of how it, it impacts like, you know, one thing to do would be to look into the myofascial kinetic lines. Okay. I don't remember how many there are for humans. They've identified 11 in the horse so far. Okay. Okay. It is so important to my work. Mm -hmm. um, I can manipulate them with energy and intent. I can use tuning forks. Mm -hmm. I use mm -hmm. tuning forks a lot in my work nice. because vibration, it's all about vibration. Yeah. 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 You change the vibration and you can release the holdings in the fascia. But fibromyalgia is an NIH actually put out a paper about this very recently, um, like within the last, I don't know. It has to be less than nine years yeah. um because they've only known that fascia is a, a dynamic system for since 2015 yeah um yeah. but fibromyalgia is likely a dysfunction of the fascial system that's why it can be random it can be anywhere it there's no real rhyme or reason to it because we don't understand fascia enough but there is a reason to it um, and I think at that, the beginning, you, you said something about be, uh, fascia being very, uh, like lots of nerve endings throughout fascia yes, as well. Yes, uh, 10 times more nerve endings than the muscles. Mm. And it's all throughout the entire body, skin to marrow. So it's almost like um, electrical storms through the fascia in the body. It is, not to mention holdings. So going okay. back here, yeah. let's say you have a, a holding. Mm-hmm. You know, that's as far your range of motion. Yeah. Range of motion. It, yeah, that's yeah. as far as it'll go. I mean, I could break it, but you don't want to do that. The range of motion changes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. So you keep your fascia healthy. You got to keep hydrated. It is so important to be hydrated. Thank you. <laughs> yep. Vitamins and supplements for, for myofascial pain relief is going to be vitamins A, B complex, which is B1, 2, 3, 5, 6, 12. I have it on my computer right here. <laughs> uh, I don't have this memorized. Uh, <laughs> vitamin C is super important. Apparently taking it in a liquid form is more bioavailable. Mm -hmm. So there's that to consider. Uh, vitamin D, mm. vitamin E, vitamin K, you need biotin, folic acid, potassium, sodium, as in potassium, sodium, not, and take lots of sodium. No, potassium, <laughs> sodium, one concept, uh, calcium, iron, and zinc. Do you have the uh, amounts for those written down somewhere? No, I okay. do not. Okay. I do not. And I believe that, that like we were saying before, getting it nutritionally is probably going to be your best option. Yep. Um, injectables also. Yeah. My, uh, my um, nutritionist says, eat the rainbow. Yeah. Eat the rainbow. Eat absolutely. The rainbow. Um, eat the rainbow. But like I was also mentioning, there's a lot of evidence that getting these things subcutaneously um, through injection, uh, are, the peptides. Are, yeah. Peptides yeah. and also vitamin, like yeah, vitamin okay. B complex as a shot is more bioavailable than taking it orally because stomach acid does a freaking number on everything. Yeah. That's, you get that a lot of that tummy. Right. Stuff. But now there's new medications coming out and I don't know what the class of medications are. And I'm super interested in this because you apparently do take it orally but they're, they, they have information and they know exactly what to work on. Nice. They're adaptogenic in some way. Like they, th these, you take them and they only work on this. Yeah. One true cripple is saying, it. please remember folic acid. It's also theorized to prevent neural I mentioned defects it. in utero. Yeah. I mentioned it. Yeah. It's there. Folic no, I, acid, I think, biotin. Yeah, absolutely. I think it was just the statement about the, the preventing neural tube defects in utero. Um, yeah. You know, and I guess a folic acid uh, acid is usually pres prescribed as the standard for pregnancy, as right. uh, Auth Authenticata is saying. Yeah, I, I remember being on it when I was pregnant. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. But it is definitely a component for healthy fascia. Yeah. Um, hydration, bone broth. Mm -hmm. 
is is mm-hmm. like not essential because if you're a vegan you're not going to be eating bone bone broth but yeah. then we were saying coconut water is really good but it's also a sustainability issue so we got to yeah. kind of keep that in mind yeah yeah um hyaluronic acid and collagen supplementation definitely Thank you so much. I appreciate you greatly. Thank you. And I am, again, like I said, so grateful to be invited and included in this. I'm just so just tickled. (laughs) Thank you for being a part of it. Oh, Mm, this is fun. Thank you. (laughs) Yes, definitely. All right here. Okay. All right. Well, hang on now. I've got to. Oh, wait. <laughs> I still can't.